Hello everyone, meron tayo ditong tatlong questions. Computation ito pero multiple choice related pa rin ito sa estimating doubtful accounts pero with emphasis doon sa dalawang methods which is yung aging of receivables and percentage of sales method. Now, the question is, Marian Company uses the allowance method of accounting for bad debt. The following summary schedule was prepared from an aging of accounts receivable outstanding on December 31 of the current year. So, meron tayo ditong table, number of days outstanding, the amount, and then the probability of collection. Ang 0 to 30 days daw, amounting to 5 million, 98% ang probability. Ang 31 to 60 days, Amounting to 2 million, 90% naman daw ang probability of collection. Samantalang, yung mga over 60 days na accounts, amounting to 1 million, 80% naman ang probability of collection. Now dito, mapapansin ninyo na habang tumatagal yung edad ng receivables, bumababa yung probability of collection. The following additional information is available for the current year. You have your net credit sales for the year, 40 million. Meron kang allowance for doubtful accounts. Balance ng January 1, 450,000 credit. Meron ka ding balance before adjustment, December 31, 20,000 pero debit. O, pansinin ninyo ano kasi relevant yan kasi although may amount ka pero merong credit or debit, it will determine the proper computation. Now, the question is, if Marian Company bases its estimate on the aging of accounts receivable, what is the amount of doubtful accounts expense for the current year? Ang tinatanong, doubtful accounts expense. Ang choices mo, 470,000 and then 480,000, you also have 500,000 or 520,000. Now, dito natin ilagay ang ating solusyon. Okay, ano ang una nating papansinin? Dito, kailangan nating computein ang allowance for doubtful accounts based on aging of accounts receivable. Papaano natin yan kukumputin? Kukunin natin yung probability of uncollection. Ibig sabihin, ilan sa amounts na ito na makikita mo dito yung hindi makokolekta. So, lagyan natin dito ano, 0 to 30 days at meron ka ding 31 to 60 days at yung mga over 60 days. And then, ipasok natin dito yung amount, 5 million. And then, you have your 2 million. And then, meron pa tayong 1 million. Ang probability of uncollectability is the opposite. Yung difference ng 100% versus the probabilities here. So, dito meron tayong 2%. Magawin na lang nating decimal. Meron tayo ditong 10%. Meron din tayo ditong 20%. O kung tatanungin ninyo ako saan galing ito, o syempre 100% is 100, isubtract natin dito. 98%, kaya meron kang 2%. 100% minus 90%, meron kang 10%. 100% minus 80%, meron kang 20%. Now, let's compute. Meron kang 5 million times 2%. 100,000. Meron kang 2 million times 10%, you have 200,000. And then, meron kang 1 million times 20%, you also have 200,000. We total this 3. Ang kakalabasan ay 500,000. Is that the answer? Oh, not yet. Pero, careful kasi kasama siya sa choices. Tignan mo dito ano, sa second na table. Meron kang net credit sales, meron kang beginning allowance and ending allowance before adjustment. Etong net credit sales magiging irrelevant na siya kasi 
hindi naman tayo percentage of sales method. So, wala siyang bearing. Now, ang balance mo na allowance for doubtful accounts, o pag nag-trial and error kayo, pag ginamit mo yan, gumawa ka ng T-account, baka wala kayong makompute. Kasi, initially, baka ang assumption mo, o gawa nga ako ng T-account, ilagay ko ito as beginning, tapos ito yung ending. Pero kinakailangan nating hanapin magkano ang doubtful accounts expense. O assuming ano, gawa lang ako ng allowance for doubtful accounts na T-account, ito yung tinutukoy ko. Pag ginamit natin yan, lalagay ko dito 450,000 because this is my beginning balance. And then, balance daw before adjustment is 20,000. Dito ko naman yan ilalagay kasi naka-debit balance. O yan yung importance ng debit and credits ano, pag nilalagyan ito ng information. O kasi remember, you have your debit and credit side. So, kung given yan, ipasok mo dyan. Pag silent, yung default na normal balance. O ngayon, kapag ginawa mo yan, ang hinahanap kasi is ito. Yung nandirito, the doubtful accounts expense. E pag ginawa mo yan, kung ito ay 20,000, tapos meron ka ditong beginning, pero ang nakompute mo, 500. Eh yung 500 mo, ito dapat yun, di ba? Which is your ending after adjustment. So, pag winark out mo yan, going back, o oh, ang gagawin mo kasi dyan, 500,000 plus 20 minus 450. Ang sagot dito, 70,000. Eh wala naman siya sa choices. In this case, magiging irrelevant itong beginning balance mo. Okay? Kasi, meron ka na ditong balance before adjustment. So, given na ito. E dahil, meron ka ditong ending na 500,000, based sa aging of accounts receivable, ang makukompute natin na amount is the required allowance balance. So, eto na yung ating ending. Now, dahil itong 20,000 ay balance before adjustment, O, di 520,000 ang iyong doubtful accounts expense kasi debit ito, ibabawas mo lang para makompute natin itong ending balance na 500,000. So, the answer here for question on Marian Company will be letter D, 520,000 pesos. Okay? O, let me know if you have any questions. Kung confused kayo, please comment down your question in the comment section of this video lecture. Proceed tayo kay Hall Company naman. Effective with the year ended December 31, 20XX, Hall Company adopted a new accounting method of estimating the allowance for doubtful accounts at the amount indicated by the year and aging of accounts receivable. The following data are available. Meron kang allowance for doubtful accounts noong January 1, 250,000. Meron ka namang provision for doubtful accounts during 20XX, 2% of credit sales of 10 million. Pag kinumpute mo yan, 200,000 yan. And then, accounts written off, 205,000. Estimated uncollectible accounts per aging on December 31, you have 220,000. What is the question? At after the year-end adjustment, what is the doubtful accounts expense for 20XX? For letter A, 220,000. For letter B, 175. For letter C, 205. Or for letter D, 200,000. O dito natin ilagay ang ating solution. Gawa tayo ng T-account. O dahil ang pinag-uusapan natin dito ay doubtful accounts expense, Dahil yung journal entry ay may kinalawan sa allowance for doubtful accounts, ilagay natin dito, allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay? O syempre, ang makikita mo dito is your beginning. Dito sa baba, syempre, is your ending balance. Ang makikita mo dito is your expense na doubtful accounts expense. At kung meron ka mang amount dito sa kaliwa, this is your written off na account. Okay? O, i-plot lang natin yung mga figures. Ang beginning balance mo noong January 1 is 250,000 pesos. Now, 
Ito namang estimated and collectible accounts per aging on December 31, ito na mismo yung ending balance mo. Kasi nga, aging of receivables ang ginagamit natin. Nagkaroon ng change in accounting estimate na tinatawag. Malalaman nyo yan sa intermediate accounting. Pero, ang ibig lang sabihin niyan previously, ang ginagamit nila ay percentage of sales, Nag-change sila ng accounting method, ginamit na lang is your estimating the allowance based on aging of receivables. Kaya, instead na itong provision na 200,000, ito ang gagamitin natin, 220. Itong 200,000 magiging irrelevant na yan kasi ang gamit dito ay percentage of sales method. E hindi naman na nga yan ang ating basis. Now, meron ka dito ang 205,000 na write-off. Ilagay natin yan sa kaliwang side. O, edi mag-squeeze lang tayo. We work back to 20. I-add natin si 205. I-minus natin yung beginning. O, ang ating makukompute ay 175,000. The answer for question on whole company is this one. 175,000 pesos. Because this is your expense amount. At yun naman ang tinatanong sa problem. Okay? I hope I am clear on this case. So that we can proceed now to Oriental Company and this is the question. Oriental Company follows the procedure of debiting bad debt expense for 2% of all new sales. Sales for 3 consecutive years and year-end allowance account balances were as follows. Makikita mo dito tatlong taon, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Ito ang kanilang mga sales, 3 million, 2 million 800, and 3 million 500. Ang allowance for bad debts daw ay 40k, 60k, and 80,000. The question is, what is the amount of accounts written off in 2020? Although ang tinatanong dito, write off. O, oh, Eto naman ang ginagabit natin ay percentage of sales. Kasi dito, debiting budget expense for 2% of all new sales. So, ang concept dito ay percentage of sales yung ginagamit pero iba lang ang hinahanap. Ang choices mo, 50,000 for letter A, 10,000 for letter B, 70,000 for letter C, or 86,000 for letter D. O, lagay natin dito yung solution. Gamitin ulit natin yung allowance for doubtful accounts. Dahil pag may write-off, ang journal entry natin dyan ay debit your allowance for doubtful accounts and credit your accounts receivable. And lahat kasi dito ng information ay may kinalaman kay allowance for doubtful accounts. O syempre, ito yung ating beginning. Ito yung ating expense na doubtful accounts expense. Ito naman yung ating ending balance. Ito dito naman sa kaliwa, this is your write-off. Okay? And this is your question being asked. Now, papaano natin kukunin yung mga data dito? Tandaan mo, ang pinag-uusapan natin is 2020. Given ang 2019, given ang 2020. Huwag mo nang pansinin itong 2018. Irrelevant na yan. Kasi, ang 2018 mo, magmamatter yan kung ang pinag-uusapan natin ay 2019. Kasi yan yung magiging beginning balance mo. So that, etong allowance for bad debts mo na 60,000, that will be your beginning balance of the allowance account on the year 2020. Etong 80,000 naman, o yan ang magiging ending balance mo. But the question is, how much is your doubtful account expense? O ito yung kukumpute natin. Kasi ang sabi, bad debt expense is computed 2% of all new sales. O ibig sabihin, kung meron kang 2% or 0 0.02, i-multiply natin dito sa 3,500,000. Okay? Para makuha natin yung doubtful account expense. So meron ka ng 70,000. O edi squeeze na lang natin ito, work back. 60,000 plus 70,000, i-minus natin itong ending balance. Ang makukuha mong sagot ay 50,000. And the answer here is letter A, 50,000. Okay? 
So, those are the three questions na may kinalaman sa estimating doubtful accounts using your aging of receivables and percentage of sales method. So, I hope nakatulong ito sa inyo. If you still have any questions, please let me know and I would be glad to assist you. Until then, I'll see you around. Bye!